Joey Varto is apparently the most interesting man in baseball. I've never heard of him, but I don't know that many baseball players. We're going to find out why that is today. What makes him so interesting? What makes him so good? Let's find out. Let's jump into this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Comment down below. Give the video a like. All that good stuff. Let's go. Joey Votto is one of the greatest players of his era. He's also a sophomore in college. Learned how to break dance, takes improv classes, and regularly <laughs> acts as his team's equipment manager. This okay. season, Votto made an Jack Instagram. Hi. Who says moo? A TikTok. <laughs> and even did an interview while playing first base. I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the tits. Today, Votto has as much fun playing baseball as anyone else in the world, but this wasn't always the case. In 2009, following an extremely tragic event, Yo. Votto experienced anxiety so scary, he had to exit multiple games early and even had to be helped off the field by his manager. Throughout his career, That's he's crazy. been described as boring, a robot, and even mean to kids. He's been involved in multiple fan altercations, has a temper that's caused him to lash out on umpires, teammates, and opponents, has had some of the most explosive ejections in recent MLB history, and has been suspended for it several times. Just took a Despite turn, I wasn't expecting. what this looks like, Votto is one of the kindest, most introspective players in the league. An event in 2020 that looked like it could have ended his career inspired him to completely change his style of play and perhaps caused him to go from being seen as boring to being the most interesting player in the league. Votto once bought and brought a donkey into the clubhouse to give to a teammate because according to him, he's a big donkey guy. Been a donkey guy for a while. Said, if you make the all-star team, I'm going to buy you a donkey. Zach <laughs> I hope his teammate is a donkey guy because imagine someone just buys you a donkey. What, what are you going to do with a donkey? <laughs> Cozart ended up hitting 316, made the all-star team, and Votto was a man of his word. Zach? What do you think of this baby? Well, he's a little, a little nervous. That's cute, you know. Stories like this have made Votto a fan favorite, which is ironic because Joey Votto sometimes seems to hate fans. I feel like I know that name, Joey Votto. I remember when you used to be thin. Votto is known for getting a ball in the field, pretending like he's going to throw it to a fan, and then just throw it back. You know who it is? It's Joe Gatto. I'm thinking of from Buddy Impractical Jokers, the funny guy. The Back into the dugout. If you know, you know. Even thought about chucking <laughs> a ball Joey Bartle, out Joe of Gatto. Field all together, but thought better of it and only launched it halfway. After a Dodgers fan threw a paper airplane on the field, Votto stomped on it so aggressively, even Adrian Gonzalez booed him. In 2016, a Reds fan got in the way of him catching a foul ball, and Votto pulled on his shirt to remind him he was a Reds fan and should have gotten out of the way. Votto immediately felt bad about this, signed a ball, wrote a handwritten apology, and delivered it to the fan the very next inning. That's a lucky guy, you know. That's a lucky guy. Most players would be fuming at him still. This, along with other examples of kindness, has proven to most fans that Votto is a good guy who just likes to troll. Unless you like the Phillies. In 2016, after getting heckled, he once again pretended to throw a ball into the crowd. In that <laughs> same game, he went into a full-on sprint to prevent Philly fans from getting a foul ball. According to him, he what did this because... Wait, what made you do it? We, su we sucked and I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> Phillies fans later booed him after he hit a bomb, and Votto responded by mean mugging them and doing his Ted Lasso inspired me celebration. Me, me, me. <laughs> Earlier in his career, the league was a completely different I like this guy, Votto would have never done this. According to him, after he hit a home run through the... Ted Lasso inspired speaking in that look. Check the fit. We got the Richmond... The Richmond kit on. Smoke stacks in Cincinnati. He put up his hands like he just hit a field goal. And then his coach told him this. If you ever pull that again, I'm going to lose a lot of respect for you. Around then, Votto even said himself that he strove to be boring. But as hard as he tried... What a nickname Votto's that is as well in the front of that. The introvert. <laughs> personality definitely showed. I was thinking of my man right here throwing on a tank, coming in the gym, doing some exercises, seeing how we get ready for the game. I don't know about the tank top, man. I don't think I can pull off the tank. Is it a nipple thing? In high school, the Reds <laughs> invited him to hit in front of scouts, but Ken Griffey Jr. was also there for some reason, and in the middle of being scouted, Votto began impersonating Griffey's stance and said, hey, everybody, guess who this is? He then hit a weak ground <laughs> ball, doesn't and care. a scout said, quote, he sure as f doesn't do that. Griffey apparently laughed, and Votto describes it as embarrassing and regretful. In the minor leagues, he was known to go to the batting cage by himself, 
set up a pitching machine to throw him hundreds of baseballs, stand there, and watch every single pitch go by without swinging once, a strategy he devised to help adjust to higher velocities. In the offseason, Votto says that when it's almost time for the season to start, he goes to the playground and plays catch with himself by repeatedly throwing a ball against the wall. Votto also uses it works, unorthodox it strategies on the field. Derek Lowe is known to throw off hitters' timing by pitching extremely quickly. Votto countered this by refusing to leave the batter's box throughout the entire at-bat. He saw six pitches, didn't leave the box once, didn't swing at a single pitch, and drew a walk. This type of outside-of-the-box thinking is probably what set Votto apart. He I don't really understand that. What, what's he done? He's not swung at anything, but then he's out, right? Someone help me out on that one. I don't understand what, what, what's good about it. Established that. himself as one of the Reds' top prospects and made it to the league in 2007. His first hit was a home run in his second at-bat ever. Today, this ball would likely be worth tens of thousands of dollars. Except when Votto was given this ball after the game, he immediately went home and gave it to his dog <laughs> so he could chew it up. I like this guy even he more says now. he only regrets because it probably wasn't healthy for the dog. Votto instantly became the Reds' best hitter, putting up all star quality numbers the moment he made it to the big leagues but as glorious as this was for Votto it quickly turned into a nightmare after runs. a tragic event His put him in such year. a dark place that according to him he genuinely thought he was going to die it also resulted in one of the most inspiring baseball performances in recent history in 2009 Joey Votto was seen in the dugout struggling to catch his breath the next inning, after going to his position, Dusty Baker and the trainer checked on him and had to help him walk off the field. Four days later, he exited with the exact same problem. And two weeks after that, he exited again, saying he thought he was actually going crazy. Votto went on the disabled list after the game, but the media and his teammates had no idea what was wrong. On the what? Is it not called an injury list? The disabled list, did he call it? Wrong with him. Turns out, Votto was facing a bad case of anxiety and depression from his father's unexpected death the year before. Oh, Votto got sick and had to miss a few games before these episodes, and without baseball to distract himself, he went into a dark place, saying he couldn't be alone, had panic attacks that forced him to go to the hospital twice, and says he felt like he was going to die. Votto was placed in the DL and left the team for a month to recover, and despite how devastating this anxiety was, during this stretch, he somehow managed to have an OPS over 1,200. After spending a month Five on the DL, he returned and finished well. top 10 in three offensive categories. The next four seasons, he would make four all-star teams, led the league in on-base percentage all four years, and in 2010, won the NL MVP award, earning 99% of the vote. At the time, Votto was known for being a, quote, a not- who's the, who's the one guy who didn't vote for him? <laughs> oh, the one or two guys, come on. Anonymous superstar, and he once even showed up to a game and was stopped by security on. because they didn't know who he was. Joey Votto, that's the man. <laughs> you gotta learn that name, man. He was described as being an introvert, focused, and extremely intense. The introvert. And a lot of this may have had Joey to do Votto. with his temper. Because Votto has had some of the most explosive ejections baseball's ever seen. In 2009... Do you know what you have to do, right? This is a bit of advice. If you've ever got two men holding you like that and you need to escape, you just gotta wriggle, man. You just got to wriggle, man. That's all you got to do. ...and extremely intense. Sorry, and sorry, sorry. And a lot sorry. of this may have had to do with his temper. Because Vaughn... <laughs> you just got to wriggle, man. That's all. Just wriggle. ...some of the most explosive ejections <laughs> baseball's ever seen. In 2009, was he was called out on this check swing and proceeded to scream at the umpire until he was ejected, then screamed at him even more. Two weeks before this, he had his first career ejection after disagreeing with this call. From here, the ejections got a lot more... Get out of it. This exact same umpire ejected Votto in 2015 after this bad call. According to Votto, he didn't even argue the call and just wanted time. When the umpire wanted him to get back in the box it started a small disagreement which turned into an ejection and then one of the angriest reactions you'll ever see the umpire accused Votto of spitting on him and Votto was suspended but it would not be his last later that year Votto got ejected just for throwing Bounce his the helmet. helmet however he had no idea he went to his position and once he realized he got ejected when he wasn't even looking he again got extremely angry accidentally <laughs> 
penalty bumping the umpire, which led to another one-game suspension. Votto was suspended again in 2021 after a check swing caused him to yell at an ump. The other ump told him not to yell at that ump, so Votto started yelling more at the other ump. He was ejected, umpire. his manager was ejected, then a Padres fan got ejected for fighting with the Reds players. After the game, a fan posted a picture of... When it's your first MLB game and your favorite player of all time gets thrown out of the game in the first inning. <laughs> Poor girl, she's got the t-shirt on and everything. Their daughter crying <laughs> because she came to see Vado and he was ejected in the first inning. Vado personally signed a baseball, apologized, Michael, invited her guy. to the next game, met her, and gave her even more things. After the game, Vado said his father also had a temper, and since it was Father's Day, getting ejected was a nice way to honor his father. Votto got ejected three times in 2020 in a shortened season where he only played 54 games. He's only played in 31 games so far in 2022, and he's already gotten in two extremely hostile verbal oh. altercations. Once after a pitch hit him in the head, and another time after a pitcher seemed to be mad, he flipped his bat after a walk. Due to his soft-spoken and introspective personality, his temper seems uncharacteristic. But he is so competitive, it seems he really just can't help himself. In the 2010 All-Star game after Marlon Bird made a play that saved the game for the NL, Votto apparently refused to give him a high five because according to him, quote, I don't like the Cubs. I'm not going to pat anybody with a Cubs uniform on the back. <laughs> according to his former teammate, Todd Frazier, he once saw Votto getting mad at himself in the batting cage while he was in a slump. In a scheme to inspire Votto to start playing better, Frazier waited for Votto to not swing at a pitch and told him, I right, Joey, swing the damn bat. Votto got even more pissed and said, <laughs> Smoke start. He goes, you, who, who are you talking to? Like, he goes, Fraser, you better Google me. You better Google me. I'm like, my computer's down, man. My computer's down. I'm sorry. So the two didn't talk for a week, but immediately following this incident, Votto got out of the slump and won player of the month. Votto has been able to put up stats and accomplishments that make absolutely zero sense. In the second half of 2016, he hit over 400. He loves getting walked so much. Once after seeing three balls, went to first base. Nobody in the entire stadium noticed, meaning he drew an extremely rare and impossible three-pitch walk. A perfect game is one of the rarest things in baseball. In the past 140 years, there have been 23 of them. From 2010 to 2014, there were more perfect games than Joey Votto infield pop-ups. As crazy as this is, it's almost expected because everything Votto does is out of the ordinary. This offseason, he took break dancing classes to help his fielding. He is a geology major at the University of Florida and takes classes online. He takes improv classes to help his community communication with teammates and Votto even volunteers to help the team's equipment managers shine cleats once a week throughout the entire season. Votto's actions on the field are just as strange. Each row once gifted Votto a dozen donuts. Votto paid the favor back by buying him 51 pizzas and having them delivered to Ichiro's locker. He once saw a fan wearing a t-shirt that he wanted, so he signed a jersey, went up to the fan, and traded it for the fan's shirt in the middle of a game. He once got hit by a pitch, then picked up the ball and tossed it back to the pitcher. In 2021, he stole a base because Manny Machado was busy doing the wave with fans. Unlike pretty much everybody else in baseball today, Votto became elite by never trying to hit homers, trying to walk as much as possible, and choking up on the bat like a little leaguer to avoid striking out. But in 2020, something... What's choking up on the bat? Is that like in golf where you like hold the... Hold the handle further down. You can't get as much distance right, but you got more control. I guess it's the same. Happen, that the same concept there. In 2019, Votto's unstoppable hitting slowed down. At 36 years old, this seemed to make sense. Votto himself even wore a shirt that jokingly acknowledged he was getting worse Decline. because of his age. <laughs> in 2020, things got even worse, and in August, he had the worst numbers of his career, causing his manager to bench him. It's Votto says average. he was extremely angry and insulted and argued with his manager to let him play, but was forced to sit on the bench for three straight games. This is when Votto decided that after 14 Major League seasons, he was going to completely change his hitting approach seemingly overnight. He changed his stance, stopped caring as much about walks or strikeouts, and focused mainly on hitting bombs. And this 
worked perfectly. At 37 years old, he had more home runs that season than any other season in his career. He had a home run in seven straight games and was an inch away from eight games and was back in the MVP conversation. Today, Votto is That's 38, hitting more bombs, trolling more fans, posting more TikTok. That's crazy though, why, if, if he's doing that, why has he not just been doing that his whole career? That's mad. And we hope he never stops. There we have it, guys. Joey Vato, the most interesting man in baseball. I'd have to agree, you know, that was a good video. I enjoyed it. It looks like he's got a, a cool personality. Doesn't seem like an introvert to me, but that's his nickname, the introvert. Seems like a cool guy. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm just confused by that at the end, the way he's changed his whole style and now he's in the in the shout for an MVP award. Surely you just be doing like your whole career then? Just try and hit home runs? What could have been, man? What could have been? You let me know. If you like this guy, down below in the comments, let me know who else I should check out in any videos. And I'll see you for the next one. Take it easy. Peace.